From Alachua, Florida, I'm Amrita Kaley. I'm Krishna Kishore. And I'm Namamrita. Welcome to Nectar Talks from the heart of New Raman Reiki, the largest Hare Krishna community in North America. And the home of thousands of Bhakti Yoga practitioners. In our ongoing series of live interviews, we explore a range of spiritual topics, introducing you to inspirational community members and guest speakers with diverse backgrounds and experience. Like bees searching for nectar, we seek to extract pearls of wisdom from how they live their lives and the spiritual lessons they can impart to us and our listeners. If you're seeking nectar, look no further. All right. Let's get started. All right. Hare Krishna. <laughs> How art thou today? Say, please say uh, Hare Bol to Dhruva Maharaj Prabhu for me. I certainly will. He, he <laughs> just left. He's going. All right. How are you doing? We've been trying to do this for a while, huh? Yeah. Two years about. <laughs> just, only two years. A oh, lot of it is on me. I uh, no, uh, and you had gotten a little, yeah. you had gotten a little sick at some point too. How are you feeling nowadays? I'm, I'm good. You know, it's an interesting process. This life, because I'm now at a stage of life that in this lifetime I haven't been before, with things mm-hmm. down, and you ch- try to question what is the real valuable thing that we're doing here. Right. What, what are we supposed to do? I, I used to be a book, a big book distributor. And then I knew what I was supposed to do. And then I was pleasing for all five. Mm-hmm. Just the deities in the temple. And, you know, now it's a little due to the body, but deeper right. thoughts about Krishna, deeper yeah. chanting, increasing chanting. And that's, that's definitely one of the re- reasons that I've been wanting to interview you for a few different reasons. First one is, first of all, I felt like from... The first day we met on the temple grounds, you you treated me like a son, and I felt like you were one of my mothers, you know, so loving, so compassionate, and just giving me hugs and, you know, sharing your appreciation for my parents. And so right off the bat, I felt very close to you. And uh, also... You are irresistible. (laughs) Sorry, you caught me off guard with that one. I I didn't expect that, but thank you. (laughs) Um, but also 10 years ago, I did a program called the uh, the Second Generation Initiative. And as part of that, I was trying to connect some of the, the younger generation devotees with senior devotees. And we had this big uh, launch program at Radhi K. I, I was part of that. Oh, you were there. Yeah. And, and well, your daughter was there, too. And she's like, you know, my mom has a lot to offer for your program. You need to reach out to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt like I've owed this to Hitta ever since, and, Krishna, and she's I right. Know. I've I've been longing to to learn from you and to have some intimate association with you. And the last thing is, you wrote this wonderful book, the the, the Divine Love Trip. And uh, like I told you before, it's my curse that I'm not a, re- a reader. However, I'm fascinated by the table of contents, which I definitely had time to read. <laughs> and uh, I can see that uh, just by by skimming through this book, there's a lot of beautiful life experience and deep knowledge that you have to share. So I'm looking forward to uh, diving into all that. Okay, don't don't have too many high expectations, please. <laughs> no, no, no worries there. So you grew up in Brooklyn. No one would have ever guessed. Um, you were in. <laughs> You went to uh, you graduated from the Performing Arts School in New York in uh, 1965. You majored in theater, um, and um, skimming through those uh, those chapters in your book, you know the first one is about uh, Srila Prabhupada, and the second chapter is from happy to happy, which is quite a famous quote. You know, Srila Prabhupada says he he transfer, transformed the hippies into happies. Right. Tell, tell us what that means for you specifically. Oh, well, I was very um, much involved in the 60s, which, is a, which was a very uh, wonderful transition for most of the youth of America at that time. So there was a lot of search for the absolute truth. And 
many things were being experimented with. Gurdjieff, um, Ospensky, In Search of the Miraculous, Bhagavad Gita, uh, the I Ching. The people, my contemporaries were searching for, for, for reality. We knew we didn't want to be what our parents were. We, although that sounds ungrateful, but I don't think any generation wants to be like what their parents were. But um, working, I do. <laughs> working nine to five, right? Having right. a job, and then you know, it just didn't. Is that that's okay? But is that the goal of life? So if if you in the if you open your book to the pictures, I don't know if you can yeah. see this. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to show. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's quiz when you see it. Yeah, it looks good. Okay, so this is the Woodstock Music Festival in 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 1969, and that's me on the cover. Wow! And this is Life me. Magazine for those of you who are listening on audio only. Mother yeah. Sama Priya on the cover of Life Magazine. What year was that? 1969. 1969. So I was playing the flute and we lived in the, and it was many, many people in the Woodstock Music Festival and playing music and um, f seeking freedom. But there was a, there was com a camaraderie. And, mm -hmm. um, but we, we were, we, we had high ideals with no philosophy. It was, it was a blank. We didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So then Krishna's mercy on somehow or another, I came in contact with Srila Prabhupada. And then this is a picture of me a little while later in Vrindavan. And that's the happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that explains it clearly. And that, and that's, and that's St. Augustine down there. So. Yeah. Um, and, and, and it's funny that you're, you're, holding a, a similar pose with your arms stretched out into the air, looking I knew what to glorify. something high. <laughs> anyway. Wonderful. Uh, so tell us a little bit about how you met the devotees. How did that all take place? Well, um, also, I, uh, during that time, I was, I was a, an actress doing some off-Broadway shows in the early 60s, in, nice. uh, well, in the mid-60s. And... Um, I decided to try out for hair. And um, so I went to the interview and I, I, I got up on the stage and they liked me actually, cause I was a good actress. Mm. But then they said, sing something. And I, I don't know what to sing because I, I, you know, I play the flute, but sometimes people who play wind instruments, they don't cultivate their voice instruments. So I, so I started to sing Hare Krishna. That's, that's what I sang. I said, Hare Krishna. And I started to sing with my heart and everything. And uh, they didn't like it. So I never, but I, but then I, be, I became a Sankirtan devotee. And I used. But, but then the Hare Krishna mantra still made it into that musical, didn't it? Oh, very big. Very big. Yeah. I wonder if you're the one that uh, triggered that maybe with your audition. No, no, no. <laughs> that was, that was actually one of the songs in, in, the, play, in the play, Hare right. Krishna. Yeah. Because, anyway, that's uh, nice. So, okay. So, and then, so how did that tie into how you met the devotees? Oh, then uh, at 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 Central Park, and well, that's that's when I was chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Then there's another one, Central Park, which was a big place for meeting people. The people would come, and the young youth were there. We would play music and. And the devotees would come. This was in, you know, 67 or something like that. So, and, or maybe 66, I don't know. They came from uh, 26 Second, Second Avenue and they would come to the uh, Central Park and a devotee would conduct some lecture. And then someone would go around with sweet balls and put a sweet ball into everyone's mouth. So I was sitting there because I was philosophizing about the Bible and, and people were saying, nah, you know, I said, this is God's word. What do you mean? We can't believe it. And so I was really searching and, and, mm -hmm. and I wanted, I wanted, so I put it all into the Bible, Judaism and the whole program, but people were not really 
thinking that this is the truth, you know? I said, well, why is God saying that it's not the truth? Then I got the sweet ball in my mouth. And I couldn't let, and, you know, that's that was one of the things, you know, prasadam is really potent. Right. So, and when, and then uh, after the Woodstock Festival, uh, Krishna Khan, uh, and somehow or another, I wound up with Hitta in the streets of New York. She was just born. And there's a whole thing in, in the uh, book about the Canary Islands where I was just by myself and I was chanting Hare Krishna. I, I, that's because I saw the little tables. They had the little card tables set up in different places, like in 14th Street in, in, in New York, um, in downtown Manhattan. And I would get books. I said, they, there weren't many books, but I, I, I somehow or another, I wound up going to Henry Street to the temple and I got books and uh, I used to take these, um, uh, there was one sheet of newspaper that was the Spanish, that was the Spanish um, BBT, one, one sheet of newspaper. And mm -hmm. I would go to the Can Canary Islands every year because um, alas, the, the, hus the, the uh, daughter of my father was in prison there for, you your, know, a your lot of people. Daughter's there. father. Yeah. Uh -huh. And before she was born, actually, because mm -hmm. he, he was, we lived in the Canary Islands and he was, a lot of people were involved in drugs then, you know. Right. Transferring. So he was in jail and you, you and basically, I would go raised, there. you raised your daughter on your own. And, but I would go back to the Canary Islands. And I, by then I was uh, distributing these Spanish newspapers and it was and I had no money so I would play the flute in the sidewalk cafes and Hitta who was like maybe one and a half would distribute prasadam popcorn she was tied to my waist with a little sash and she'd go from table to table I mean it's a heart rendering story I don't, you know, wow well yeah. I mean I, I'm I'm literally picturing you know uh, a homeless lady on the street with her kid what? Well, kind but, but of, you're but, but at the same time you're distributing <laughs> Krishna, Krishna yeah, mercy. I, I, That's I pretty had, amazing. And, and had some friends. So this person at one point gave me a, a little shack with a mm -hmm. broken down car to live in on the beach. And I was known as the Hare Krishna lady because uh, wow. I was just chanting Hare Krishna and and uh, standing in different places playing the flute and. Uh, then he would, uh, the father was making some pocket, uh, bags in, in his prison thing. And I would sell some of those bags. And hmm. meanwhile, it, and everyone knew me. They actually sometimes arrested me. And the, the policeman said, I'm going to let you off here. Don't do this again. Don't keep on. I'm not going to bring you to the station because they loved me, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was giving everyone little pieces of prasadam and chanting wow. that piece. And I, I don't know. I mean, the things that you go through when you're young. Right. How old were you when, when uh, at that time, would you I say? I was 24. I was 24. 24. I was when I, I met the devotees and I started my sojourn when I was about 19. Mm -hmm. That's when, right after Woodstock and the whole thing. But Amazing. So it, from the... I'll just say, I'll just say yeah. that um, what we go through when we're young, uh, just like Prabhupada says in the womb, you can't put a person back in the womb because you can't even breathe for one minute. No one would be able to tolerate that kind of intensity being back in the womb. It's not very pleasant. You get bit by little animals and little creatures. And I, in the same way, what I went through in my Bakhtin program to become a devotee, I don't know if I could do that. And I never complained. You know, you don't complain when life is new for you. You don't complain. You just accept this is what Krishna is doing. And then I found this little, in the Canary Islands, I found this little shop with a little deity of Krishna carved, carved out of ivory. And it was, you know, so I made my offerings and, mm. oh my goodness. Wow. It was a, it was a tale. Yeah. The name of my book, The Divine Love Trip, is that you have to go through this gruesome path for 
Krishna to separate you from the material energy. And I just read something in Gopala Champu, who's by Jiva Goswami, how the residents of Vrindavan were experiencing so much distress and separation from Krishna. But in order to get Krishna, you have to go to Vrindavan, whether it's in your consciousness or in, in physically. You have to feel this intense separation from Krishna. Hmm. And then you can achieve it. So he started really from the beginning. It's been like that. <laughs> what, what, what advice do you have for those who are going through such, you know, difficult life situations as the one you were in at the time, but who may not be able to make that connection? Okay. You know, they know, we know about Krishna consciousness. We know the philosophy but we're not finding the shelter yet, or we're not able to, to process it that way. Okay, so it's not cheap. You gotta do the work. And sometimes we're forced into doing the work out of desperation. Chant, the holy name. When I first became a devotee and all this was going on with me, I chanted 40 rounds a day. That was it. I started chanting 40 rounds a day. I just took whole full shelter of the holy name. I just, you know, I figured, whoa, there's no other way. That's good for me. Three words, Hari, Krishna, and Rama. I figured it out. This is, I'm going to go for this because I had a new baby. I had to all by myself. I had to do this thing. And wow. so I took shelter of that. And there was uh, of the holy name and Bhagavad Gita. There was Bhagavad Gita, the little blue book. I don't know if anyone, if you know about it, that the original Prabhupada wanted to pre print the big Macmillan Bhagavad Gita, but it wasn't, um, there was some difficulty. So he, he printed a smaller version, okay. of which was an abridged version. They recommended it for, um, for new devotees anyway. Actually, no, I never heard of that version. Class. An abridged version by Prabhupada. Yeah. Actually, I have a copy. Do you want me to just so I can show it to you? Right sure, if, it, if it's nearby, yeah. That's I never heard of it. It's really interesting. There's been so many oh, follow-up right. versions of the Gita by different disciples of Prabhupada. Um, yeah. but I, yeah, I can't I can't find it, but it was all right, everyone I'll look knows it up. all the all the old devotees know about the little blue book. Hmm. And and uh, so that was available and a couple of um and teachings of Lord Chaitanya. Right. And nectar of devotion. So I would read, 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 read. And then and then when probably when it when I came back to America from one of the trips, I got the big Macmillan thing. One time my mother came to the Canary Islands and the Bhagavatam had just been printed. Uh, not the original Prabhupada's when he came over on the ship, but the the other big blue books and they and they she got them in the temple in New York and mm -hmm. and she carried this load. It must have been 20 pounds. And my mother was little and she brought it all the way to the Canary Islands wow. and for me because I was like, that, well, that was my life. And as I realized, you know, you have to give your life to Krishna or you don't have to. It depends upon what you do want in this life. But so, so if we're, you know, we say... I think this might apply to a lot of the devotees who are born in Krishna consciousness. Yeah. Um, and they weren't seekers to the depth that, that you were, for example. Um, and we do accept it as the truth, but, you know, like yeah. I was saying, maybe we're not always able to find shelter in it. So you're saying, you know, it's not cheap. You got to apply the practices, reading, chanting. Yeah. And, you know, but, you know, but Prabhupada... He's very, I see that most of the younger generation, younger, you, know, you guys are not so young anymore, but but uh, younger, you know, our children, the first generation right. Hare Krishna kids are um, brought up in this rigid philosophy, you know, love Prabhupada, don't, don't want to be so restricted. But then there is pain in life and horrible things that we have, that we go through somehow or another for why are we going through that why right. are we going through these hellish things somehow or another we have to think that this is a benefit for us mm -hmm. and so it's really hard to tell the second generation well you have to chant and read 
But then there's always puja and worship. My daughter has a Shiva temple mm -hmm. right outside, right outside the door. Her, her, Chris, her husband, built this temple, her late husband, mm -hmm. um, for Lord Shiva. And she does that. She does the puja there. And, you know, I think the best thing for my generation to do with your generation is to just let you do Krishna consciousness the way you are inspired to, for goodness sake. You are a unique, <laughs> you are a unique breed. You are a unique breed because yeah. you were forced to go to Mongol Artique, forced to follow everything at four years, at, at two, I don't know, four years old, you get up a lot, like little children. They, and a lot of kids didn't have their parents with them. So I think that our duty toward you guys is to let you work and let you take over, hear what you have to say. Mm. And instead of, and because just like Prabhupada says, until the last breath, the politicians are staying in place. And, and, what, and everything is becoming all with, with spider webs and, you know, old mentality. And it's, it's unfair to not hear and give you facility to expand Krishna consciousness in the way that you are supposed to expand it. Mm. Even, if, even if you don't chant 16 rounds, this will come. Right. This will come. You know, there's another way of looking at things. Mm. I think it's been, uh, you know, but I have no power. All I can do, I remember, I, I remember a long time ago, I said to you, you should start the coup. <laughs> you guys should do a coup because everything's old and gray hair and not seeing and dying and you guys are gonna have to do it somehow or another. Uh, I really, really yeah. appreciate what you're what you're saying there. I think it, it really is such a, a gift of love that you recognize that and maybe not all, but certainly probably a good portion of the second generation devotees. And I can say that for myself. Uh, I think I, I wrapped up a three-year midlife crisis, which when I turned 40, and a lot of it had to do with just that, you know, how much I was trying to apply the practices of Krishna consciousness into a life that was so different from the first generation devotees, and, and the reference point may not have been fair uh, in, in the way I was trying to interpret and apply the philosophy and um, yeah, I, I agree. I think, you know, the second generation specifically has a, a beautiful offering and responsibility to expand um, you know, how we um, understand and apply the, the philosophy and the practices. So, yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate well, that. Well, you know, I, I think that from what I see, you guys have to organize yourselves. Right. The, the, you, it, we have the now, the, there was Hare Krishna generation, first generation. That's okay, up until now, or maybe up until a while ago, anyway. But you have to take over. And I am so insignificant, but whoever's hearing me, let them take over. Do it the way you can do it. Do it the way you can do it. Become pure devotees of Krishna and do it and spread it the way you can do it the way it's natural for you that was this is good that you were saying even if it's not the end of the interview um sure sure yes yeah. so tell, tell us about this little uh snippet and i i because i i from the very beginning have been into individuality i'm mm -hmm. always individuality because we are all individuals and this movement is based on personalism. We're all different kinds of people. It's just like when it rains and the sun is shining, all the different growth in nature, the apples, the bananas, the, the, the oak trees, the, the, the marigolds, the carnations, the, 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 the um, what's it? What's that beautiful white flower? I just offered to the deities today, which I was going to take you on a little um, The gardenias. The gardenias. And all of them grow beautifully with the same food stuff, the sun mm -hmm. and the water. So that's the potency of the holy name. 
That's mm. the potency of the holy name. And because it was forced on you guys, there's like, whoa. But, but now when you sing together and you, when you grow together and you let Krishna be in the center and Prabhupada be in the center and, and do it with your own heart. And, and that, that's, that's, that's what this clip is about. Prabhupada talks of variety. Mm. He said, there we're personalists. There should be variety. Um, and not that everybody dresses the deities in the same way. Mm. You know, there are mm. rules and regulations that you got to follow. But right. in that, allow yourself to bloom. Allow your relationship with Krishna to bloom. Allow that to happen, you know? And, and, and seeing it in every part of our life. Right? Pardon? It seeing it in every part of our life, I yes, think it's such yes. a, a skill that needs to be developed over time. It's not easy, but to be able to, to really see our his hand, our practice, the philosophy, the love, and every situation it doesn't always have to be when we're at the temple or while we're you know, practicing sadhana specifically it, it's it's everywhere yeah well but the practice there some practice just like everything else if you're going to be a doctor you got to go to school you got to do the work if you want to understand your relationship with krishna then you have to hone some things i mean you you were all born in a situation where krishna was present automatically and that's a, a, a very auspicious and very fortunate but Absolutely. yes but so a different dynamic has to be worked with you to um ex expand your own your own krishna consciousness where you're enthused where right. you're enthused to give this to others where you have so much faith and i know Prabhupada. most of you love love Prabhupada, and you know would fight for Prabhupada, you know, like. And so. I want to say that I I have nothing but gratitude and love for, you know, the movement, Prabhupada, all of his disciples. I mean, it it's obviously, you know, our life is uh, right, so, but so blessed, even, even right. though, yeah, like I said, I, I've had to kind of try to reframe things to see how do I apply this in my life? But well, uh, you know, there, there has been a lot of mistakes made. There's been a lot of mistakes by the devotees because, you know, we're not perfect. That's for sure. This first generation with the pioneers, there's been mistakes. There's been child abuse. Which is like, what? There's been, right. you know, all this stuff. But I would beg all the second generation, you, unite with each other, you know, see what you can do in your own with your own cord to serve Srila Prabhupada. Yeah, and yeah I, re I really like that that point of finding what really gets us enthusiastic. Right. Uh, you know, for me, this this podcast, as much as life really definitely gets in the way, but I, I find this to be such an amazing opportunity to just get to meet so many wonderful devotees in this community. And mm -hmm. I just... You know, I see this as a, this is a lifetime of, you know, I'm blessed to be able to do this. I hope we can keep right. it going. Yeah, yeah. it would be nice. Anyway, so let's, gonna, let's we'll, play, we'll play this, we'll play this clip right here. Everyone has got for the advanced devotee to serve the Lord in a particular way uh, so that the Lord may be more satisfied. That is their intention. Hmm. Sometimes we also have some parties in the temple. Someone wants to dress the deity in a way, another wants to... Of course, they are not transgressing the rules and regulations, but it's still... Uh, Everyone wants that I shall serve the Lord in this particular way. We cannot change the original rules and regulations, but there is variety. We are not uh, uh, impersonalist. Uh, every person has got to serve the Lord uh, in a particular way. That is allowed. The center point is Krishna. So although there are parties, 
If the central point is Krishna, so there is no dissension. Now, another thing that I want, I don't know, is there a way that I'm going to turn off the video because I'm going to show you something that is extreme, that is also a motivation for me in my devotional life. Yeah. I want you to see this because this is what I, this is what I do. This is an instruction Srila Prabhupada gave me when I got initiated. He told me, he told me to worship Lord Chaitanya in my home. So now I'm going to show you my, that one wow. that, this is my That's Lord. Beautiful. Wait a minute. I can't I'm trying Lord to Lord Chaitanya and Lord Chaitanya and that's and that's a Gaur Nataraj and here is Radhago Vindagopinathji. Hmm. And Beautiful. and there they're my life. That that's what I do. Prabhupada told me to do this because hmm. I had such a wild life and he probably said, Okay, just stay put. But of course I wasn't able to do that completely. Gorgeous, gorgeous <laughs> altar. Thank you for showing us. I want to hear a little bit about some of uh, your adventures when you were a, a Sankirtan devotee. You have some, oh, some, some uh, still looking at this table of contents, I see something yeah. about Buddhist monks, Muhammad Ali. Tell us a little bit about yeah. some of your, yeah. your uh, you know, memorable experiences as a Sankirtan devotee. Oh my goodness. And this was, uh, you were li living in LA uh, for and most of the time period? And I used to dress with me to work at each every day for 10 years. Uh -huh. And then I would go out in San Cretan. Okay. To, go out in San Cretan means go to LAX, which sometimes we called LAX. Because <laughs> the furthest west you could go, and the people are like, oh boy. So, but, but there were some wonderful things. I mean, so, um, one time I went to LAX regularly and I never made the connection. That's that's where a lot of book distribution happened back oh, in the day. Of course, it was it, it, the airport was a little old, so they remade some of the things. Mm -hmm. um, I remember one time that I gave this, I was distributing books, and this is just one of the things that that can happen to you. Um, I, I was, I I gave a, a guy a book who was a real jerk. And um, and he said, well, you just gave it to me. I'm not giving you any money. You just gave me this book. I said, just give the book back. You're probably not going to read it. And I don't know, I got into a thing. Like, give the book back. I'm not giving <laughs> the book back. So he was <laughs> carrying the book and he had his sunglasses in the other hand. I grabbed the sunglasses. I'm not giving you the sunglasses if you don't give me my book. And he took me by the neck. Pushed oh me against the wall, and my feet were dangling. Oh my so God. Taki, who was another sacred on the devotee, saw me, came, and started pounding on the guy's back, pounding, pounding, pounding. And I, anyway, I, I let him have the book, and I dropped the sunglasses, and, it, and he ran. Wow. <laughs> well, maybe he read it after all that. <laughs> but then, then there were some wonderful, wonderful things. I mean, Muhammad Ali used to come all the time to uh -huh. uh, LAX on his different adventures going here and there. So the Sankirtan devotees knew him, mm -hmm. heavyweight champion of the world. So one okay. time they, Rameshwar came to the airport to say goodbye to um, his pal, uh, um, Bhagavan, and the book distribution was going on. And I saw them, they were in the uh, international section of the airport. So mm -hmm. I saw them and I saw Muhammad Ali, I said, and he was just going to board a plane. He said, I can't talk to you. Here, take some money. I can't talk to you now. I got to board this plane. And I said, no, you have to come with me. Here I am pulling the heavyweight champion of the world, who was like three times taller than me. I'm pulling. I said, you got to meet a guru. You got to meet the gurus. And I brought him, I slapped him over to Ramashwar and Bhagavan. And when Ramashwar, because these two guys were always competing, who is the best, book uh -huh. to, you know, who has the best, uh, um, uh, scores for the book distribution. Right. So, and they were always com competing. So when I walked over with Muhammad Ali, the heavyweight champion of the world, this was like the prize in Ramashwar. Whoa, no one could beat this one. No one could beat this one. <laughs> so I brought him over and there was a picture. I was going to put it in my book, but um, I couldn't find the picture. Um, mm. I, there I am 
uh, Ramachar and uh, Bhagavan and Muhammad Ali is like right in the middle. And it was, that, was, that, was, that was sweet. At the, uh, and then we were at the airport, uh, International, and there was a lot of, there used to be these Buddhist monks who would come through all the time, you know? And I, I, I was attracted to them. I always, I always like would speak with them and give them books and, and they they'd always give twenty dollars or more or something. They, we had a nice exchange because they could they could understand that this was something important for them. Mm -hmm. And I just was really good with them. And uh, so I, anytime someone would see the Buddhist monks, they say get sama because I was I was good with those kinds of people, you know. So I was I gave them some books and this and that. So one day I was dressing to in, in the temple. I used to, and they used to have in LA, they used to have the class, the Bhagavatam class early, um, uh, you know, right after Mangal Archi. So the Sankirtan devotees could have, you know, get hear the Bhagavatam and get enlivened because the Sankirtan devotees went out right after, like early in the morning. So that to facilitate that, the class was early. So I was dressing to Archidish and the sannyasi came and he was going to give the class. So he told this story about, this boy who was interested in the spiritual life and he was in Korea somehow or another. And, and, and then he was riding on a train and he saw these Buddhist monks opposite him. And he, he said, you come to my ashram, you come to our ashram. They were saying, you come to our ashram. And he was looking for some kind of reality of life. So he went with them to their ashram all the way, they took the end of the train and then they went up the hill and they had to walk for a while. And then they took a truck. I mean, like in the mountains of, um, what's that, of Korea, in oh. fact. Yeah, so so then finally got there and it's an impersonalist, they're impersonalist so there wasn't much going on, but they did have a library. They mm -hmm. had a library, ancient books, Korean language, ancient, ancient. But they, he did find two books, The Science of Self-Realization and the Bhagavad Gita. And I'm dressing Dorkadish and I'm listening to this. That was my thing. I gave out two books. You know, after a while, you can't carry in a book bag 15 enormous Krishna books. You know, oh, that, that's, gets right. a little, you know. And, right. So I always had, I always gave out these two lighter weight paperbacks, Science of Self-Realization and, and Bhagavad Gita. And he's saying this, I'm dressing to Orkadish, and he said, this guy, let's call him Harry. He found these two books in the library. And I'm dressing to Orkadish, and I was thinking, whoa, maybe I saw something. Okay. So and I used to sign all the books. So then Harry sat down and he went through from cover to cover, both of the books. And then he said to this Buddhist priest, thank you very much, I'm going home. He went down the hill, he walked, he went on the train, on, on the bus, on, you know, all the way back to the airport. He, threw in, he flew into Houston, Texas, and he went to the Hare Krishna temple. And he wow. Wow. A, I'm just in Dwarkadish. That's amazing. I'm here with this story. And it was just, it was what but, a, Yeah, what a mystical experience that, you know, as you're dressing the deities. <laughs> I mean, this is something a lot of Sankirtan devotees, we give out thousands and thousands of books. And right. you don't hear sometimes right. the result of that. So anyway. That's wonderful. That's and, such a beautiful story. Yeah. Sometimes things would happen on Sankirtan that was so remarkable. You you wished that someone was there to see. I, I would always I, I hope the demigods are watching this one. This was incredible. You know all the yeah. different things. Yeah. All right, but that's enough. Nice. Thank thank you. Sorry, I I don't do much book distribution anymore, but mm. I do do. I still am teaching and preaching. You know, we have our Bhagavatam class. That we do yeah, on. yeah. I want to. I want to hear about that. Maybe we can end with that because that's kind of what you're you're doing currently. But going back a little bit, you told me that you you lived in India for some times, uh, especially in in Jagannath Puri, and and you mentioned that this was you weren't in specifically in like a devotee community. I, I would love no. to hear how did that affect how you live 
your Krishna and consciousness are, now, having had that kind of an experience? Okay, so we lived in all three dons. We lived in Vrindavan mm -hmm. for for four years, and uh, then we lived in Mayapur. Okay, yeah, this was way in the beginning, and then we li decided to li to live in Puri. But there was a temple. There is a temple in the beachside in Puri. And um, they, they, were, they were starting to, they're trying to start a temple. And uh, so we were part of that. And devotees started to buy parcels of land. So it, it wasn't that we were just like out there by ourselves. It were, but nobody was coming, you know. We bought the land, we built the house. And um, the, the uh, but it, it was a hard project to develop somehow somehow we were in a bubble for 20 years we lived in Puri you know uh, we you lived in Puri for 20 years years and wow. back, and forth, back and forth you know um maybe even more than 20 years but hmm. but we were it, it we were by ourselves because people weren't going there to establish the community uh -huh. and anyway that's that's so it wasn't exactly that we were on our own completely it was it's an iscon project it's an iscon I see. okay it, it wasn't um developed and we were trying to develop it got it got it but it was very profound because this is where lord chaitanya spent his last years right I, i've never been to jagannath puri so i'm i've been to mayapur i've been to vrindavan that's the one you know of the th main holy lands i haven't been there so i'm really curious very Tell, tell, tell us a little bit, you know, for someone like me who's never been to Jagannath Puri and you've lived there for 20 years, yeah. what are some I'm of the takeaways that you could share? This is this is the Puri section of my book. Mm -hmm. So anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot, you know, you go through so much and uh, anyway, you come to a, a part of your life we're having used so much energy to try to develop different things and uh, push on this movement for Prabhupada as best as you can. Such a life of dedication. I'm so mm. grateful. Well, then you see, you can't do what you used to do. Mm. So what are you supposed to do? There's, some, there's another step. There is another step. You can't understand it until you get to this place in your life that mm -hmm. there is another step. And that step is going deep into your heart, into Krishna consciousness, into the holy name and developing that internal relationship with Krishna. And you can only develop, like you can only go to Krishna if there's intense separate, if you feel this intense separation from him. Yeah. So that has to be cultivated. You can't do it when you're, have so much energy to do so many other things that right, you right. Oh, that's, that well that's a that's a beautiful that's such a beautiful thing that you're highlighting because yeah i mean i'm only 44 but i i have chronic back pain and so i'm experiencing a little bit of what every older person must go through at some point where you can't do certain things you used to do and that's just going to get more and more as you age. And so it seems like a big grieving process, but I love how you're, you're showing us that this is finally the opportunity, the time where not only should you, but <laughs> you may not have a choice, but to go it's internal to and, and just really finally get in, into the deep, you know, parts of your heart and trying to connect on that level. Because yeah. right now I'm in a place where I'm like, I can't do that. I, I have so much I'm managing ex externally, you know, between a career and family and, and health and doing some service and trying to practice sadhana. I feel like where is the space to go internally? And, I, you know, of course, I do manage to process certain parts of my life that way. But I, I like what you're what, what you're giving us there that, you know. The time will come where you know life just kind of takes its uh, its new phase where yeah, that's new all you can do. <laughs> there's another thing that 
um, we have to get over the lamentation of it mm -hmm. and understanding that this is, is, is an essential part of our path back to Godhead. This is, if that's where we want to go, this is, this is, we have to pay attention to this. We have to pay attention to our internal absorption. Did you, did you ever see a, hear a singer who was really famous in the past and like he's in his seventies and eighties trying to sing now and it doesn't make it, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's, it's time to do something else, not like retire from life, you know what? It's so funny you say that. Um, I grew up in the punk hardcore scene, and there's this band called Suicidal Tendencies. <laughs> that I, what a name, right? I was I, I was a fan of, and just yesterday, um, I was watching a YouTube video of of them playing, and they're a lot older, and the lead singer is doing. He's kind of has his signature stage moves. But now he's older, you could see he's out of energy and he's doing those same moves. And it's just like, wow, I can really see how he is just pushing so hard to get that same persona to show up on stage. And clearly, like, it's not as cool and natural as it looked when he was, you know, in his late 20s when I saw him on stage. <laughs> so, it's you just reminded me of that. It's true. And the we have to understand that there is something more that we have to do and we could only do it when we have the realizations of having a lifetime of krishna consciousness even though, even if you don't have a lifetime of krishna consciousness you you become a little wiser when you're older hopefully yeah yeah if you do have Prabhupada to follow you know that it, it, it's, it's our duty, it's our duty to take the next step to like what we're doing for the summer. We just came back from, from the beach. In fact, you've been trying to get me to do this interview several times. I went to the beach to recover from something. So, mm -hmm. so um, it, it was, it's just a very wonderful thing to give yourself time to get deep into some far out transcendental literature and the holy name. So we just came back from that. Uh, we, we were gone for almost two weeks and mm -hmm. reading Gopala Champu by Jiva Goswami. Oh, my goodness. It's a Krishna book, but it's like a little bit more developed and mm -hmm. gives you so much hope, you know. But when are you going to, how can you cultivate a desire to do this, really, if, unless you've come to some realizations that you have? It's okay. It's okay to do it. See, that's what the old generation, the, the, we have the... We have to know that it's okay to go deep into this stuff that has been presented to us by Srila Prabhupada, all these books of the Acharyas, and to get into our relationship, our personal internal relationship with Krishna, that this is need needed. Not, and then people might say, well, Prabhupada didn't set that example. Look at we's talk, look at Prabhupada, look at our condition when Prabhupada was present. We were very immature and we didn't know much of anything we so and after a lifetime of chanting and reading and serving and preaching we have had to come to some realization that now is the time to to go deep into our krishna consciousness and that's our contribution at this point this mm -hmm. is you know because we we're the first generation to become krishna conscious in the west so what do you do at this point be a singer who can't sing anymore or mm -hmm. do something that actually will help be helpful to the world show by example that this krishna consciousness it, make it everything to you we've been making it everything to us allow ourselves to take these, these steps and it doesn't mean that we just have to go off by ourselves although sometimes that's actually recommended for mm -hmm. the vanaprast it's recommended in the bhagavatam we just read it in the temple the vanaprast is uh, performs austerity, reads the scriptures, and has philosophical com conversations. So th that requires time. You, you can't just say, oh, I'm going to do that. You have to practice and go through the steps of, of cultivating your taste for this kind of 
different kind of life than that we had when we were your age. Yeah. I wasn't expecting to say all that, but actually, they, that's oh, right. Well, you have a whole chapter about the aging process in the book. And honestly, uh, I, I really want to go uh, go read it. I'm, I'm looking at the, the, the different subtitles there, Cultivating Renunciation, Let's Cheer, The Line of Times, The Lines of Time. So yeah, it, to me, I, I am just fascinated and I'm so um, inspired and encouraged by senior devotees like yourself who you've seen life, you've practiced, you've applied Krishna consciousness and you, you have so much to share about the, the truth and the reality of so, this process. So the, thing, the thing that, you know, that I would like to share most is encourage everyone to chant the holy name somehow or another, whether it's Japa, whether it's Kirtan. This is the Yuga Dharma. This is the way we develop pure love for Krishna in our hearts. But then there's other things because there are nine processes of devotional service. And uh, anyone, Prabhupada said many times, will lead you to the desired goal. But I mm. see that, that the young people love the kirtan, love kirtan. So continue that and then, then make a coup. <laughs> take over. You're going to have to take over anyway. I, I, I love that. Personally, I don't think we need a coup because I, I embrace everything that you've all given us. And I just want to contribute. I want to add to it. Expand. We all we all have so much we can we can offer. Service is unlimited. That's what I find. It is. It's unlimited. For, and for every single one of us, it's unlimited. We have all so many opportunities to serve in ways that can just make us so thrilled about Krishna consciousness. Yeah. I yeah. truly believe that. So also another really important thing is to encourage. You can't get anything from anyone if you discourage them. We yeah. have to encourage each other. We have That's to, you can't say, you're this, that, and that, and you should do this, this, and this. Mm. I mean, it, you know, this is, that's not how to encourage each other, obviously. And we see we lose people like that, especially our youth, which is not youthful anymore, but, but we call you youth. <laughs> you, know, sure. our, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, oh, I couldn't agree more. I think, you know, no matter what, even if we might identify, well, this person is doing this, should be doing this, it is our duty to find the words, the language that is only going to let them feel loved and inspired and encouraged and accepted for who they are and what they've been through. And I think it takes a mature devotee to be able to... Um, to, to do that, you know. I, I would like to read you a poem from my book. Yes, by the way, I noticed that there's a lot of philosophy that you've included in your book, and, and most of that is in poetry, which is so beautiful. And of course, I know you for a lot of beautiful poetry that you've posted on your Facebook and contributed to different temple events. So I just wanted to thank you for that beautiful quality that you have of writing poetry. Go ahead. Um. Well, wait a second. I'm looking for it. Oh, here it is. Uh, you know, there's so many, so many poems, but um, let's see. This is called Instrument, and it's in the chapter Accepting Krishna's Plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. I pray to be an instrument, pliant in your hand. Whatever note you wish to play, I will understand. What is the nature of a servant? What, to what does he aspire, if not to satisfy the Lord fulfilling his desire? An enthralling melody, Kirtan fills the air. Immersed in love and ecstasy, we dance without despair. The holy name resounds aloud, filling time and space. Play me to the highest tune that I have yet to embrace. Mm. You move me to compassion and thus my heart extols. Rally, rallying, I declare to all conditioned souls, the Lord has come to give us hope, bewildered lives to tame, to save ourselves from Maya's tricks, call upon his name. There is a gracious concert we sing with harmony. Every soul who gives his life plays in this symphony. Krishna is the grand conductor molding us like clay. 
preparing us to join with him. He knows for what we pray. Sometimes the song he makes us sing brings us to our knees. As we cry our broken hearts, we beg him to appease. There is a yearning deep inside that now begins to grow. No one else can quench this thirst and only he can know. Let me be an instrument enthused I play your song and glorify your holy name for this sound I long. But if you choose to crush me in your divine embrace, then keep your feet upon my heart in their rightful place. Hare Krishna. Wow. Ay, ay, ay. You. I, I cry you're a lot. Bring, you're going to bring me to tears. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your, your writing process. Do you remember when you wrote this and how did it come about? Oh my God. I've been writing for so many years. I, I, don't, I don't remember this one. There are other poems in here that I remember when I wrote it. I mean, this is part, of, it's, it's recommended to write. It's part of our purification. One of the qualities of the Vaishnava, is it, 20, or is it 26 qualities to be a poet? Abhi. Yeah. Um, so... What just because I'm just curious, you know, is it uh, just inspiration just kind of hits you out of nowhere and you sit down and you write it, write it down, or do you make a an, exactly. an effort to? Nothing's out of nowhere. You have yeah. to be contemplating things. Usually, when you're tortured in your heart, then you start mm. to. Yeah, mm. you know, with so are these like prayers? Most, you know, most of most. They're of like them. prayers that you're writing to Krishna. Or, or prayers. Mm. And some of them are comical, actually. Mm. I, you know, I, I'd write a few. I like to make comedy. <laughs> you got to have a that's, sense. Of that's really inspiring. I, I love this oh, idea. of like, Not that I'm a writer, but I, I, I like the idea. of Because so much of this process and what I find um, intriguing and not easy about the process is this idea of how do I surrender to Krishna? You know, it's all about surrendering to Krishna. How do I practically do that? And that's a really good example. You know, I'm having a hard time about something. Let me write down, sit down and write down a letter to Krishna in the moment. That's you know? nice. That's an idea. Nice, right nice way to surrender. You know, I also was uh, also um, asking the same question in my life. What, what is devotional service? What does Krishna want me to do? Mm -hmm. what, what, what is it? Is it me? But actually, whatever situation we find ourselves in, this is what Krishna wants you to do. And, you know, we, we are very good, us conditioned souls, in manipulating or trying to manipulate the material energy to be in our favor. I know all of us have had experiences like that, but uh, it sometimes it's not successful. More than not, it's not successful. So surrender means do what you're doing for Krishna, accept your life the way it is, See how you can improve yourself. Understand this is not a playground. This is not what we, in the beginning, maybe you think it's a playground, but there's serious stuff here. Yeah. You know, we don't want to come back to this world. It's, the world is getting worse and we, we, we want to take full advantage of this benefit that we've been given by Srila Prabhupada. Somehow or another, if people would just read his books, forget, you know, this is the, I, the you associate directly with a pure devotee when you read Shila Prabhupada's books. Mm -hmm. And and that and it tells you how to, to do everything. And we have to also, you know, that's the first process of surrender is to understand we don't know anything and hear from the pure devotee what what we're supposed to do in this very chaotic world, in our very chaotic life, you know? Yeah. When, when we came, when we're at the at the ocean. I, I was looking at the ocean. I remember I told you we saw the dolphins. I think yeah. so <laughs> was so cool. I, I heard the dolphin. I didn't see it, but I certainly heard your reactions to the dolphin. <laughs> but the ocean is so vast. That is a magnificent thing. The ocean, the sky, and you 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 actually get a little bit of a hint of your insignificant self. Hmm. It's such a big ordeal. And it's a you know, I got to do what I did. And it's like, what were you? You could be scrushed out in one second. You know, see things in the right perspective. You know, yeah. it, it doesn't mean that we're worthless. No, 
but usually our misconceptions and traumas and things that we go through, this is what it is. Do it. We have to be a mensch, right? You're a Jewish boy, right? You know what mensch is? A mensch. I, is someone who comes I, up to I learned that word from Mother Mukia, yes. She likes to call me a mensch. Good, you are. <laughs> you got to be a mensch. Because what's the point? You're here, you're alive. Do something with your own conviction from your own self. You know, discover who you are. Who's going to discover who you are? Someone else? You know, I'm really good at being me. If I try to be you, right. I'm going to really, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> well. That happens, that happens when you get old. Ah. Uh, very good stuff. You're you're doing beautiful, beautiful okay, in your your senior years. Don't worry. <laughs> Just, uh, tell us a little bit about. Um, I want to use you as a reference. I'm going to use you as a reference now. When you're in front of Krishna, no, I'm sad. <laughs> Go on, Dolly. What? No, Sorry. I'm, you forgot. I'm very grateful. No, I didn't forget. I I wanted to know about. Um, Maybe we can end with this this uh, online Bhagavatam course that you're doing oh. with your husband. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we have, this is interesting because we started doing, um, you know, online courses about uh, 2010. Mm -hmm. And we, we did the whole Bhagavad Gita, the huge Bhagavad Gita. We did that. And um, we had students and this was before Zoom. So sometimes we had these chats that was our weekly chat for a review for our students. Mm -hmm. And um, when we, even when we went to Pori, that we, the electricity is like really terrible. You know, sometimes it goes out, sometimes it doesn't go out. It's unreliable. And we tried to set up a chat, but we set it up in the middle of the night in Pori. It was the right time in, the, in, in, in America. This and is when you say chat, it's like a phone chat. chat. Chat means you write something in the computer. And oh, I see. see it. They don't uh -huh. even use that anymore. So that's how we would communicate. Yeah. And, uh, so um, my husband makes the courses either, and I, I've helped him often. Um, it's the Bhagavatam. We did the first canto a few years ago, and then we do the second canto. And we just finished the third canto. It took us three years to do. Wow. And so... We have assignments for the students to read like twice a week. There's a cert certain amount that you have to read online. And then there's a forum question for you to uh -huh. think about while mm. chanting, while you're um, just give yourself time to think about what this from, these verses from the Bhagavatam could mean. And mm. then write something. And there are other people who write also. So everybody sees what each other writes. And then uh, we just incorporated this mostly during the COVID time that we have the Zooms. Yeah. And every uh, Saturday morning, we have a Zoom with our students. It's very interactive and very sweet. So people have been staying, and, people have been studying. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, is that uh, something Sada you have Sada. to enroll in or is it? Yeah, I'm gonna tell you. You go to sadhusangaonline.com. Okay. Sadhusangaonline.com. And then you can uh, you see the courses, and you can and you can you see read about it. Got it. And also my book, which is uh, actually uh, it came out just just when COVID was there, so it was pretty hard to distribute. That's Krishna's mercy on me. I couldn't distribute so many. Uh, so, but we did do the ebook. You know, it's it's an and I so I printed a thousand copies and they're pretty much all gone by now. I have like fifteen or twenty left, but it is congratulations. It, uh, that's, that's wonderful. It was only a thousand. That doesn't. But anyway, sounds like um, a lot to me. <laughs> if anyone wants it, you can go on uh, Amazon to get on it. Amazon. And then you also do an audio version of it. I didn't. I did some poems in the audio. Anyway. Okay. Okay. We have audio actually in the Sadhu Sangha uh, online.com thing. There are all the different, uh, my husband and I have been reading the, all the courses. So people go online to, to hear that. I don't know. 
oh my God, you know what? I'm going to have to ask my husband if people want to go on there and see where they can access those audios. All right. Well, we have the your website and then this this book, Divine Love Trip, is available well, on Amazon. Let me Amazon. tell you how to get it on, on Amazon if you want to. Um, sure. Just you have to look up Sama Priya, The Divine Love Trip. That's okay. It. Got it. That's it. And then you'll get it. Fantastic. Well, this has been a wonderful discussion. Thank you so much for sharing about your life, your amazing journey, your beautiful adventures in Krishna consciousness. And uh, I'm taking a lot of uh, thank you for doing this because wisdom on your, your this is a very important thing for all the devotees. You know, maybe it'll be meaningful that to see the the, the preceding generation. And what yeah. and how how Krishna consciousness has affected our lives, and to yeah. encourage everyone, just do it for Krishna. Just be yourself for Krishna. He created you. He wanted you to be you, right? Just 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 do that nicely. Try to get a taste for some kind of devotional service, mm. and uh, then perfect your life. That's, uh, you give me a lot of hope. In Krishna consciousness for my own life. So thank you so much. I'm sure everyone's going to really appreciate what you've given us here today. And I look forward to seeing you around the temple or somewhere. Get my next book from you. Let's go back to Godhead. <laughs> I heard there's a boat leaving soon. <laughs> if anything, we'll oh, meet we'll next back in Godhead. Yes. Let's go. <laughs> okay, sweetie, thank you so much. Thank Have you so you. much, Mother Samapriya. Hare Krishna. Yeah.